Hello everybody, welcome to Taft's Word, and today we're going to be talking about, um, again, about managing expectations. So, it's been a little bit of time since I've done a video, and I've wanted to wait for the right time to do, you know, something significant, you know, with a video. I don't see the point putting something out, reacting to every single game, or every single little thing that goes on at the football club. It's better to sort of evaluate the period of time, because in the period of time between the last video and this video... Significant things have happened, very good things, some bad things. So we went, obviously, I think the, one of the last times I did a video we were talking about being on like a, like a three game losing streak following a three game winning streak. And now we've gone on another winning streak and another losing streak. And now we just had a fantastic result away at Gillingham who were meant to be one of the front runners in our division. And we won away with a clean sheet. Go figure. You know, I think that's testament to how messed up League 2 is. Well, I wouldn't call it messed up, actually. I'd call it unpredictable. It's very, very unpredictable. It's a mad league this year. I mean, today's opponents are Fleetwood. Fleetwood have been rather underwhelming in the division this year, but they went to Warsaw, who were one of the, the better teams in the division at the moment, and they won 6-2. And some Warsaw fans are saying they're by far the best team they've seen so far this season, but... A lot of other people who looked at the whole Fleetwood were crap when they came to us. Um, there'll be people who've watched us and thought, oh, Newport was shit. There'll be some people who've watched us and thought, bloody hell, Newport, good. So it, it's it's up, down, roller coaster. So from the last time to this time, we've gone up and down and up. And now today it's a matter of, right, okay, what's going to happen today? Big unknown. This is t t today, one of the first games of the season where we're going into it with something of an expectation to win. Maybe Accrington would have been the other game uh, that we looked at where we think, right, we should win today. Um, I don't think anyone expected us to beat who we've beaten, um, except for Morecambe, other than Accrington. And um, so I think it's the first time we're coming into a game since then where there is something of an expectation for us to win. But what I would do is say, don't expect a win. Don't expect to win in any game this season unless we go on a big winning run and we're playing against at home against somebody who's right at the bottom losing week in week out. Like if we take on Morecambe or Carlisle at home at some point soon um, on the back of us going on some kind of winning run where we've just been blowing teams out of the water, that's when you could maybe expect to win a game. All I'm going to say to people who come out with some very reactive, um, very abrupt very over the top comments like slagging off the chairman or saying the manager needs to be sacked or we need to sack all of the players and get all new ones yeah because that's a fucking great idea that is isn't it let's just go into the, an even bigger unknown at least we know something about these players who we've got now you know I mean, some people just waffle at absolute crap you know they don't evaluate they don't take time to think about things they don't take time to digest I mean, we played against Chesterfield Friday night. We lost 3-0 at home. Disappointing, of course, but I thought we didn't deserve to lose the game. The 3-0 scoreline would suggest we deserved to lose the game. But, you know, there's nothing else there to suggest that we, we, we deserved to lose the game. And if you watched it, first half wasn't great. I mean, some people say it was god-awful. I don't think god-awful. I think it was just a matter of they expressed their quality. And to be fair, they've got more quality players than us. So that was going to happen. Uh, but in the first half, we had a few bright moments, but we had to reevaluate at half time, which we did. We came out with a different plan and it was working. Uh, other than the fact we should have had a penalty and their goalkeeper took the ball over the line and not just a little bit over the line, but a good few yards over the line and the referee still didn't give the goal. You knew it weren't going to be our night. Carl Hedlin. Hit an absolute cork, a bounce back off the post, off the keeper. And a lot of the time comes off the post, off the keeper, bounces into the goal. No, didn't do that. So you just thought, it's not going to be our night, is it? Uh, they caught us on the break twice, where we were pushing for a goal. We were pushing for two then at one point, so they, they went up the other end and scored a third. Caught us on the break. Will Grigg, quality striker. They were able to bring him off the bench 
We're talking about the difference in quality. Now, we've got talented players. We've got a manager who can tactically set up a team to beat other teams because we've beaten Crew, we've beaten Salford, we've beaten Doncaster. You know, we've beaten Gillingham now. And they were all tactical masterclasses. This manager's learning on the job, but he's able to to get better every week, but then he'll make a mistake and his team selection may, may lose us a game. Or it might be the substitutions may lose the game. Like the substitutions probably cost us the game at Bradford. We got back in, we're 1-1, one, better team, lost 3-1. They got their subs right, we got our subs wrong. Simple. You know, these things happen. We've got to take the bad with the good and just enjoy the ride. Losing a game of football is not the end of the world. We don't have to go all over social media with the, the absolute fucking thick bastard shite that I see. Sorry to have to swear, but but I find it quite depressing sometimes. Now, I like to be part of these groups because there is sensible conversation on there, and I really enjoy them. So that's the reason I won't drop out of those groups. I see some of the absolute crap some people speak, and the fact people agree with them as well. I'm like, I mean, this is outrageous. It's stupid. Outright stupid. You know, you've got to be thick in the head to actually think that that's right. And the people who agree, you're thinking, God, what is the fucking average IQ of our fan base? You know, there, there, some people just haven't got a clue what they're on about. You know, they don't know how to play football. I hear people groaning, because, oh, why didn't you chase for that? It's like, where the fuck is he going to chase? You know, he could be like four yards away. Why didn't you jump for that? Because I'm four yards away, you pillock. You know, I, I, I despair sometimes. I'm like, if you ever play football, you've ever been in a position where the ball's over there and you can't get there. But people are expecting you to just be there. You know, it's like positional play. I mean, if you're going forward, you're trying to help score a goal. They caught it down your side. And then all of a sudden people expect you to just be there. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not lightning fast. You know, these people aren't machines. They're human beings. They're football players who play for our club. And they're getting ra absolutely rampaged, you know, with awful, awful shit from our own fans a lot of the time. And it's fucking depressing. Really, really depressing. So, all I'm going to say is now, we've had some good. We've had some bad. We've won 6 out of 13 and we're in mid-table. 3 points off the playoffs, 10 points clear of relegation. Surely, you're happy with the position that we're in. So if we lose today, all right, we lost. Not the end of the world. Disappointed we lost, of course. And if there are any individuals who, who didn't play that well, point that out. Don't say, oh, they're not our level. Get rid of them. You know, oh, they, they, I, I hope they never play for Newport County again. Just after one bad performance, come on. You know, we can't be having that. Oh, Hugh Jenkins got everything wrong. Well, no, he haven't. You know, he's doing things on a budget. You know, he's trying to keep money back. You know, the budget... Our budget, I bet our budget is a fraction of what it was last year because of what he's been able to do. Some of the players who went with some of the wages they were on and some of the players who've come in with the wages that they'll be on, I can guarantee our budget is lower than it was last year. But we're doing things smarter. It goes to show you, throwing money at it doesn't give you success. There are clubs who throw money at things and it's not the answer. It's where to put the money in the right places. You know, oh, you see a, a top quality midfielder up for grabs. All oh, right, okay, we better sign him then before somebody else does. He won't fit in our team, but we better sign him. That happens at our level, you know. And then it's a matter of right, let's go into the championship. Who's just been released by championship teams? Um, who's relatively young? Okay, um, yeah, we'll go for him. We're paying four grand a week, and he doesn't live up to the hype. A lot of clubs do things wrong in League 2, League 1 as well. Um, the reason why throwing money at the, at, the, at the likes of like Stockport and Wrexham and Mansfield, now Mansfield have been trying to throw money at it for years and they've been failing and failing and failing, but they finally got it right because they they got the right manager in place with the right system, with the right recruitment process. Our system, the right system with the right recruitment process, young talent, we can coach into good players, like we've done with Will Evans, like we've done with so many of the lone players over the years. You know, you coach these good youngsters to become top quality players. And then, Will Evans, we've got 200k for him. That's a lot of money for us. You know, that, that that's like 
that's like 15% of our annual budget, you know, just by selling one player. Plus, you know, he wouldn't have been on a lot of wages because we, we, we managed to extend his contract. Um, you know, we didn't sign a renewal, so we wouldn't have come in on a lot. He'd be on a lot of money now at Mansfield, of course. But you see what I mean? We're doing things in the right way, you know, but it's ne not going to come immediately. The budget would increase when we start getting some money for some of these players or when we go on another cup run or when Hugh Jenkins gets more investment because he did say he's not going to do it on his own. There's no point just bringing people in. I mean, people saying, oh, he haven't hold, held up his end of the bargain with bringing more people in. Oh, he didn't do it at Swansea on his own. He had the right investors. And that's the fucking key. The right investors. There may be interest and it may be not. They wouldn't be a good fit you know, for this board. So, sorry, I'm not interested in, in your proposal. Wait for the next one. Wait for the right one. And then the next right one. Or they may be two or three at the same time who all know each other. Who come in say, here you go, Hugh, we want to buy into this project with you. And this is what we're proposing. Hugh will look at it and think, yeah, that's the right one. And then he's got three all, all at the same time. That's how these things can happen. You know, I'd imagine that's probably how it happened at Swansea. He didn't do it overnight at Swansea. It was a long process. You know, it's probably like a 10-year project where they eventually made it up into like the Premier League and all that. You know, from the bottom of League 2. Um, well, what was the third division at the time? And they did it correctly. The right investment from the right people with the right involvement with the right people who know what they're doing. Hugh knows what he's doing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people at the football club who know what they're doing. Nelson Jardim knows what he's doing, um, but he's adapting to League Two. We've started with a particular type of football that we want to try and play, but we have to adjust because people, oh, yeah, we're not playing that football anymore, though, are we? Like, well, yeah, because we're adjusting because you said he needed to. You know, he's adjusting. When we can express ourselves with this, with this brand of football, we do. And, it, and we do it well. But when when it's a scrap, we'll scrap. We lost the scrap at Harrogate, but we were able to scrap against Gillingham. I mean, you, you've got to understand, right? There's there's players there who've got it, and they're young. And I mean, you look at Matt Baker. Matt Baker, whilst under twenty one at National, just scored a freaking volley, <laughs> top bins volley in his last game. He scored three goals this season, and there, there was some statistic that. Every time Matt Baker's missing, we've lost. And he's played eight times and we've won six. So all six wins, we've had Matt Baker in the team. We've lost twice with him, of course, but you get what I mean. But the other losses, the other losses have been when he's not been arraigned. So Matt Baker's going to make us a lot of money one day. A lot of money. Um, how we manage to sign him permanently, I don't know. But I'm absolutely delighted with it. Going to make us a lot of money. Um, you know, you look at players like Kai Whitmore. Kai Whitmore is going to come along. You know, he's going to be a star. He's going to go up championship level, possibly. He could end up at Cardiff or someone like that, possibly even Swansea. And, um, and he's going to make us a lot of money. I mean, you look at um, like the likes of Spellman, who haven't had the chance to really kick into it yet because of because of injury, but he looks good. Bobby Camwa looks good. Whether Bobby Camwa's at his level in League Two or not, I don't know. But he's still relatively young. And he's still getting coached. Um, he's finding ways to do things a bit differently. Obviously, his dribbling ability has always been a, an asset. But it gets found out a little bit too easily sometimes against some opponents. So, switch his wing. Get him on his right foot. And uh, put the ball at the box. Two assists. Against Gillingham. Away. You know? So, players are adapting. Management are adapting. We are adapting. We are improving enjoy it for god's sake just enjoy it managing expectations now you know we lose a game it's not the end of the world because there could be a bloody good one around the corner we lose three games in a row don't panic there's a good one around the corner and that's proven now so enjoy the ride that's what the title of this uh, uh vlog is going to be and that's what i'm going to encourage you all to do enjoy it you know we got good times ahead i think so uh Look forward to that and just enjoy it until they come. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheer for now as always. Up the county. See you all today for the Fleetwood game.